Hi everyone. Welcome. All right. Welcome to episode two of the Black Girl's Guide to Natural Medicine. I'm just getting settled. All right, how are you guys doing? Great. Thank you so much for all of the love um, from my first episode. It was so well received and I got so much love and wonderful feedback. So thank you so much for listening. Um, welcome to the Black Girl's Guide to Natural Medicine. I am your host, Sarah Ellis. I am a naturopathic medical student. And also, I am here to just share some tips and tricks on integrating natural medicine into your lifestyle, how to find a naturopathic doctor or other holistic healthcare provider. And today, specifically, we are going to be talking about how to create your healthcare dream team and kind of what that means. So um, before we actually get started, I want to check in and see how you guys are doing. So one thing I want to implement before each episode is I would like for you guys who are joining live and if you're watching the replay, comment down below. Tell me, how is your week going on a scale of one to five? One means it's terrible. You had the worst week. You're so glad it's Friday and for it to be over. Or five, you're having a great day or great week. You know, it went perfectly, no complaints. Um, so while you guys are typing that in, I will share. I would rate my week at a four. And that's because I had a birthday. I turned 32 this past Wednesday. And um, it was really cool. I mean, the last two out of three birthdays, uh, well, for some context, my birthday is on Cinco de Mayo, which is always awesome because who doesn't love a margarita? But uh, the last two out of three birthdays, I've been pregnant. So this is like the first time in quite some time that I was able to enjoy a margarita and just have a good time. And so I had a great time just celebrating, feeling loved and celebrated and just being thankful and expressing gratitude about um, being able to see another year. So I am thankful for that. And that's why I would rate my week a four. And I wouldn't rate it a five because school and work was stressful this week. So I had to take a point off for that. So I hope you guys are doing well. Um, let's get started. All right, so what do I mean when I say healthcare dream team? So I think of it um, I'm a, a little bit of a basketball head. I used to be at least. And I always think of um, the Olympic dream team. You know, it had all the amazing uh, players and they were just unstoppable. And so when I was thinking about a new way to approach healthcare, I thought of it on that terms. You know, you as the patient, you are the coach. Okay. You're Phil Jackson. And you are in charge of all of these different players. Okay, your doctor, your dentist, your therapist, and they work for you, okay? Um, and so if you think about healthcare in that way, you want the best of the best, okay? You want the LeBron James, the Kobe Bryant, the Steph Curry's, like you need all of the great players. And so if you think about healthcare in that way, um, from an empowered stance and also from a holistic point, then you'll kind of understand what I mean when I say a healthcare dream team. So not only do you want the best of the best players on your team, but you want to make sure that each player does something different. You know, you don't need five different regular primary care doctors, but you may need a primary care, a naturopathic doctor, an acupuncturist, a specialist, like an endocrinologist or a rheumatologist. And so you get different services and benefits from each player who is the best at their job. And so today I wanna to talk to you about who should be on your team, 
how to build your team, and then questions you want to ask when you are interviewing them. Because like I said, you're the coach, you are the boss. You should go and interview your doctors, ask them if they have experience dealing with whatever condition that you are coming in for, um, and so forth and so on. So we'll talk more about that later on in today's episode. So let's get started. Who should be on your team? I am, <laughs> we're in the pandemic, okay? It's quarantine and I have a chihuahua. So you can likely hear her barking because probably someone's walking by. So excuse the noise. <laughs> but um, so we'll have an MD and a DO. And so these are your allopathic doctors, which you consider your traditional conventional doctors. So these are your primary care, um, doctors you'll see in the hospital, so forth and so on. These are necessary because you there are a lot of tests and blood work that you want to get done that you want to make sure it's covered by insurance because sometimes if it's ordered by other practitioners it won't be covered in addition you want to have a doctor who has hospital admitting rights you never know if you get into a car accident if unfortunately you experience some sort of trauma and you want to make sure that your doctor will be able to manage your care from the hospital. And even as a soon to be naturopathic doctor, I have an MD. So um, it's the perfect um, player for every team. And just like its um, counterpart, a naturopathic doctor is the perfect player for every team as well, because it gives you an aspect of the natural and holistic approaches you can take for your health. And so the thing I want to talk about the most about naturopathic doctors is making sure that you choose the right one. So there is a difference between naturopathic doctors and a term or a position called naturopaths. So naturopathic doctors have gone to accredited four year medical schools that their schools have been accredited by the CNME and they've gone through rigorous studying, they're taking licensing exams, and they're well trained. Whereas naturopaths are kind of like your lay person who may have been studying this for a certain amount of time or oftentimes got a degree online, no shade. So you want to make sure that you're getting healthcare advice from someone who is licensed and experienced and has gotten the proper education. Um, and if you're interested, you can go to naturopathic.org and they have a directory where you can find a local naturopathic doctor. In the next episode, I'm gonna talk to you guys so much about naturopathic medicine, where to find one, where it came from, all of that. So don't worry, we'll cover that in the upcoming episode. All right, so the next team player. So we have our basic medical care covered. We have our MD or DO. Also, if you don't know the difference between an MD and a DO, an MD is a medical doctor. A DO is a doctor of osteopathic medicine. They um, are both, and this could be controversial depending on who you're talking to, but for me, I consider them equal. It just depends on the type of approach you want to take to your health. DOs can sometimes be more holistic, see things from a more holistic standpoint than traditional MDs. Um, and But as far as training and everything like that, they're pretty much the same. I just kind of go with who I resonate with the best and who I feel like is going to give me the best care and actually listen to me. So we have medical care covered, MD, DO, and ND. So next is where I branch out into other areas of our life, because we're not just all focused on our health. You know, we have mental health, emotional health, our physical body, like our muscles and bones and stuff. So the next player that you can consider is an acupuncturist. Now, acupuncture is well studied and they are trained healthcare professionals who use very thin needles. 
to stimulate specific points in the body. And they are trained in also generally traditional Chinese medicine. So they can re recommend like traditional Chinese herbal blends. Um, but it's another way to kind of stimulate another aspect of your health and of your body. Medical doctors and NDs don't always have the answers. And so this is why I like a very diverse team because I can address my problem from multiple different angles. So um, I have had acupuncture many times. I love my acupuncturist. Um, she definitely played a role in helping me get pregnant and to help with stress and relaxation. All right, so next, a chiropractor. You guys are generally familiar with a chiropractor. Most people go see a chiropractor after they've had an injury or a car accident, but they're great for general maintenance. Um, I saw a chiropractor from a young age, like probably seven or eight. And then I started up again once I started naturopathic school. And um, in addition, in school, we learn different chiropractic manipul manipulations. Um, so I've had quite a bit of experience around chiropractic care, and I find it super beneficial. I mean, when your muscles are hurting and your back is hurting, um, they educate you on the importance of good posture, okay, of ways to reduce injury when you're working out or just moving things around the house. And it's very great if you're someone who wants kind of instant relief. If your back is hurting, your neck is hurting, you don't have time to be laying under a heating pad or anything, check out a chiropractor. Generally, you can get pretty immediate relief when you go see them. Again, make sure that they are trained in addressing your concerns. So for example, I went to see a chiropractor uh, when I was pregnant and there is a form of chiropractic medicine and chiropractic care called the Webster Technique. And practitioners who are certified in that know how to take care of pregnant women and newborn women and women in the postpartum phase. And so I made it a point to look for providers who are certified in that. And so um, that's something that you want to think about and a question you want to ask. Does this person know how to care for me and my condition? And how do I know that? All right. So let me pop in and see if there are any comments or questions. All right. Great. Keep them coming, guys. All right. So we've covered traditional medical care some adjunctive care through acupuncture and chiropractics. Now let's talk about a dentist. And I'm sure you guys are like, a dentist, really, Sarah? Like, yeah, I see the dentist, yes, because it's important. Your teeth are very important, not just aesthetics wise, but also just general health. An infection in your teeth can infect your bone and then go into your brain and cause systemic, not brain, sorry, your blood and cause systemic issues. And so it's very, very, very important that we take care of our teeth. So you should go see a dentist twice a year. Um, make sure that you see a dentist who is, again, familiar with your condition if you have a specific condition, or if you find that you're very sensitive to certain um, tools that they use or solvents or whatever ingredients are in um, different things that they use. Maybe you wanna seek out a holistic dentist. Um, there are so many different variations of healthcare providers. So that's where the research kind of comes in. So make sure you prioritize your dental care. I know it is super easy to kind of just let it pass, especially when you're busy but it's definitely something you wanna stay on top of because dental care can be very expensive, even if you have insurance. So we wanna get ahead of it and know that there are different kinds of dental care providers. There are dental surgeons, orthodontists, periodontists, periodontists <laughs> um, 
and they offer different services. So your options are unlimited. Next, uh, mental health care providers, also known as therapists. So I have seen, let's see, I first started seeing a therapist my last year in college because I was super stressed out. Um, de definitely dealt with anxiety. Um, so that was my first introduction to therapy. I have been going consistently though over the last five years and I could talk about therapy all day. Like it has been a life changer. It's truly been a life changer. Um, I, we're actually going to be moving from California soon and the saddest thing has been potentially leaving my therapist. Like she's a walking angel, but I say that therapy is important, particularly now, because we as a community have just gone through and are still kind of in one of the most stressing and distressing um, situations that we've gone through as a community, as a global community, and that being the COVID pandemic. There's been so much loss, so much death, so much stress and strain that prioritizing mental health is going to be a primary focus for the foreseeable future. Um, going to therapy for me has been very insightful. I've learned so much about myself, so much about how I process information, how I receive information, how I like to be loved, how I express love to people, how I show up in life, and it's helped me identify um, my way of thinking and realizing that the way that I think about myself or my situation, my life, really plays such a huge role in my health and well-being. And so it's more than just laying on a couch and just spilling your heart, but it's about getting the tools to lean on when you are in rough times. It's about learning more about yourself so that you can go on to the next phase of, in life and be successful and happy and make your way through life's inevitable challenges. So um, my favorite resource for black women with therapy is, um, Therapy for Black Girls. Sorry, I had another <laughs> thought in my head. Um, therapyforblackgirls.com. That's where I found a therapist and she was awesome and amazing. So uh, please, please, please prioritize your health. Use these resources to find therapy. You never know, your company may provide um, mental health services. It could be covered in your insurance but you have to look and search to find out. Um, a question I get a lot is, what do I do if I find a therapist and I don't relate to them or I don't feel like it's a good fit? Keep looking, keep looking. You know, it's kind of the same when you're dating. Just because you find a guy and you don't really kind of hit it off, you're not gonna swear off dating and relationships all the time, like forever. Okay, that one wasn't a good match. Let's keep going. And you have to do the same thing with a therapist, particularly, but with any healthcare provider. Um, and before I go on to the next topic, I did want to highlight the fact that there is a difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist. So a psychologist is someone who often does what we call talk therapy or cognitive behavioral therapy. And so these are the ones that you sit and you talk to, you tell them what's going on, they listen, validate your feelings, kind of talk you through it, um, and then provide you with tips, skills, tool sets to kind of help you move through and beyond that concern. Um, a psychiatrist is someone who can do the same, but they also have the ability to prescribe medications like antidepressants and other medications for mental illness like bipolar, schizophrenia, and so on and so forth. So that's something to keep in mind when you're looking for a mental health care provider, whether you want a psychiatrist because you need medication, which no shame, no guilt, no stigma about that. Medication is a tool. And if you need it, 
you need it. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so if you need medication, you can see a psychiatrist. If you don't and you just want help processing your feelings and emotions and growing as a person, a psychologist um, would be a better fit. Okay, next. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying, um, again, we're in the age of COVID. And while some people have gone back to normal, others like myself have not. So personally, I have not seen this type of care provider in quite some time, but I found their services to be super helpful. And that's a massage therapist. And again, I'm sure many of you are probably like, girl, massage, isn't that a luxury? Like, that's only for special occasions. It doesn't have to be, girl. It doesn't have to be. So, yes, massages are great for birthdays and maybe anniversaries and uh, Mother's Day, but it can be great for general maintenance, particularly if you find yourself struggling with musculoskeletal pain or muscle and joint pain, um, or if you just have trouble unwinding and relaxing, scheduling a weekly or biweekly massage is the perfect way to help you establish a self-care routine. So you know that this is an appointment that I have every week or twice a month that I never miss. It's my time for myself where I can treat myself, I can take care of my body, and it gives me quiet time to think, to process, to kind of um, take inventory of what needs to be done or um, what needs to be worked out in, in your life. So that's why I love a massage therapist. Who doesn't love a good massage? It helps you feel better. It helps with stress. And so, yeah, that's what I would add. And that's a key part in my um, healthcare dream team. Uh, second to last a health coach. So um, I will say that if you find yourself really wanting to achieve certain goals, so whether that's weight loss, reducing your cholesterol levels, um, improving your strength, and you need accountability, um, a health coach is perfect for that. They help you stay on track with your goals, help you come up with goals, um, and they also, in some cases, depending on their training, <clears throat> can help you understand your doctor's plan and help you stay on track with that plan. So if your doctor wants you to take these supplements or this medication, the health, co health coach can help you stay on top of that, can help you create a schedule. Okay, take your supplements or medication. Your doctor wants you to take it in the morning. Let's do that in the morning and then you can work out and so forth and so on. So I think if you are in desperate need of an accountability partner, just someone to help you take those first few steps into a new healthcare and lifestyle change, a health coach is where it's at. And lastly, a spiritual advisor. Again, we all have basically gone through hell over the last year. And not only do we need to prioritize our mental and emotional health, but we also need to prioritize our spiritual health as well. And that doesn't necessarily mean being in a physical church. It doesn't necessarily mean um, even logging in for an online church. It means establishing a relationship with whatever your higher power is, whatever connects you to um, your spirituality and your spiritual practice. That is the focus when I say a spiritual advisor prioritizing your spiritual health. And so um, for me personally, I focus a lot on music, particularly gospel music. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I love some Kirk Franklin. Okay, Kirk Franklin, that album, um, Songs for the Storm, Volume 1, Chow, got me through some things, okay? Um, that's my favorite album for whenever I'm feeling just depleted and empty and tired and hopeless and confused and even grateful, you know? So I rely on applying music in my spiritual practice. 
I rely on prayer. For me, um, I believe in God. And so I use a whole bunch of different tools in that prayer as well. So I like candles, I have sage, I have crystals, I have all of these different things that help me feel more connected to God. And so the beauty about this is that it's customizable. Um, you can create it however you want it to look. It can look like going physically to church. It can look like online church. It could look like a special little corner in your bedroom where you sit for a quiet moment and light candles and um, pray and talk to God. It could look like honoring your ancestors. For me and my sacred space, I have this cute little picture of my grandma, my mom's mom. Um, I personally feel like she's my guardian angel. So I keep her in my sacred space and I pray and I talk to God and I talk to her and I ask her for help. Um, so the beauty about that is it's customizable, but you want to make sure that you prioritize that. So if you don't have a spiritual practice, think about what it would look like. What do you want out of it? Do you need a space to vent and cry and just pour out everything that you've been carrying? Do you need a space to be grateful and just focus on the positive things that are going on in life? Or um, do you just need a space to just be? And so these are questions you can ask yourself when looking for a spiritual advisor or um, establishing a spiritual practice. So who's on our team? Let's review. We have doctors, MDs, or DOs. Naturopathic doctors or NDs. We have a acupuncturist, a chiropractor, a dentist, massage therapist, a mental health professional or a therapist, health coach, and a spiritual advisor or establishing a spiritual practice. It sounds like a lot, I know. But the good thing is that your calendar doesn't have to be full of appointments for all of these people. They are tools in your toolbox, okay? So when you're going through certain issues, you know that, oh yes, I can call Dr. So-and-so and they can help me with this, or I can go to my chiropractor and they can help me with my back pain, or God, I'm just having a really, really, really rough time. Let me tap into my spiritual practice and see if I can get relief and answers and comfort from that. So you have your team picked out or you know who you want to be on your team, what's next? Interview them, because remember, you are the coach. So talk to them, figure out, do they have experience working with your condition or working with people like yourself? Are they well-trained and have expertise in this area? Um, do you have a good energy and a good vibe and connection with them? Your intuition is very, very important because this is someone that you're trusting with your health. And so if, excuse me, if you are struggling to trust them, if you are struggling to connect with them, are you going to feel vulnerable enough to share even your most embarrassing symptoms or complaints? Um, are you gonna be able to share your true issues and concerns without fear of judgment? And if you aren't, then are they gonna be able to give you the best care? Are you gonna be able to get the results that you're looking for? Those are questions you have to ask yourself. So um, also ask them if they take insurance. If not, do they have a sliding scale? Do they offer discounts for cash pay? Um, also, do they commonly work with the other people that are on your um, team? Maybe not that specific doctor, but if you're working with a naturopathic doctor, have they worked in partnership with MDs before or chiropractors or acupuncturists? And on that same note, you wanna make sure that each team player knows about the others because herbs that your acupuncturist or your naturopathic doctor may recommend could interfere with perhaps prescription drugs that you're on, um, particularly drugs for depression and anxiety. So it's very important to let each of them know about each other 
so that they can stay on top of drug interactions and drug herb interactions as well. And lastly, um, it's very, very, very important that you focus on your mindset. So I think a lot of us are used to taking a back seat when working with our doctors because, hey, they have this bright white coat, they have a stethoscope, they've gone to school for 20,000 years, they know so much more than me. And while, yes, they are trained, they have studied, they have dedicated so many hours and years and time into their craft, but no one knows your body like you. You live your entire existence in your body, and the doctor is only seeing a snapshot of what you present like in the clinic or at their practice. And so it's important that you maintain a power and an empowered mindset so that you feel comfortable sharing your concerns and vulnerabilities with your healthcare providers, but also you don't suffer with poor care longer than you have to. That you feel like, okay, this doctor is not meeting my expectations. He's not, he or she is not listening to me. So you know what? I can go find someone else. You're not the only obstetrician in the city. You're not the only uh, rheumatologist in the city. And that's great because then I can find someone else. And so um, keeping that mindset and having the strength and the confidence to advocate for yourself, that is number one. That's number one. So we have talked about so much today. I am so excited to have talked about this. It's my first time kind of sharing this thought out loud. Um, let me know in the comments below if you have created a dream team, if you have a favorite um, part or player on your team that you see religiously. I think for me, that's my therapist. I love her so much. So. <laughs> Uh, she is an appointment I never miss, okay? I will move around my entire schedule to make sure I talk to her. Um, so let me know in the comments below. If you are joining as a replay watcher, let me know in the comments. Say hello. I follow them, so I'll be sure to chat back with you. Um, again, thank you so much for listening. This has been a great experience. Um, catch me next week on the Black Girl's Guide to natural medicine. Oh, also the podcast, the audio podcast is live. Um, I forgot to mention that in the beginning that I also stream. So if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, I also live stream every Friday on Facebook and on YouTube. So go on Facebook, Motherhood Manifested is my Facebook page where I go live. So if you would rather see my beautiful face, and interact with me. Join me on Fridays on Facebook. I try to be on by 1030. Might not make it on time every Friday, but I will be there. So no worries. Um, and if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or um, Spotify, please rate and subscribe and share. If you're watching streaming live, please share with your friends and family. And for any black girl who's out there looking for more information on natural medicine. Until next time, I will catch you guys later. Bye-bye, take care.